and security for the NATO summit as early as next week. That's before it starts and stretching from uh, McCormick Place all the way into downtown. Yeah, the red zone has been laid out and heavily armed uniformed officers will fill the loop there. WGN's Julie Unruh is live inside what is being called the red zone tonight with more. Julie. Hi to you guys. You are right. As of May 1st, they will be uniformed officers, specifically in battle dress, we're told, and yes, carrying weapons. Their job is to secure federal buildings down here in the loop as we approach the NATO summit next month. They will be here a great deal earlier than the summit itself. Now, few people knew there would be this second designated zone in the city at all. In fact, even the event coordinator herself for the NATO summit had no idea until she opened the paper today. There it is, the surprise headline that caught even the NATO summit coordinator off guard. A block in the loop that could resemble a militarized zone in place as early as next week. It's designed to protect federal buildings during the global event coming to Chicago in May. A lot of us were surprised to read that, and obviously the federal government doesn't consult with the city when they do this. Everybody was, you know, uh, unaware of this. It's my understanding that it's common practice for the federal uh, government to have protection around their own buildings. I really can't comment on it other than that, although I'm sure that there's discussions going on today uh, with them. And what you're going to see is they're going to be in appropriate uh, gear uh, with a show of force and to make sure that nothing improper happens, that people who aren't supposed to be in the buildings don't get in the buildings. Security expert Jeff Kramer with Kroll Inc., a security advisory firm, says the officers will be carrying non-lethal long guns and other beanbag-type weapons up and down city streets. They're charged with protecting federal buildings like the Metropolitan Correctional Center, the Dirksen Federal Building, the Klesinski Building, even the post office. The red zone reportedly extends from Harrison to Adams and from State to Franklin, including the financial district and right next to Willis Tower. These visible officers will not stop people entering the red zone, but they will watch carefully what happens here. You'll see a lot of, uh, a lot of the uh, police cars lined up, uh, blocking some of it that way, but people still need to come and go, so you can't really erect fences uh, around this area. Nervous, just to be around that, I was just, because you're not used to that every day and then all of a sudden you see people around here with those guns and everything, it's, I think it's uncalled for. Uh, it's a little intense, but, you know, they need to do what they need to do, and they need to be ready for when NATO gets here. It's no use in being not prepared. Now, the summit coordinator for the city of Chicago said, although this second designated zone has been made known to the public today, she has no reason to believe there will be any other zones designated. Of course, she didn't know about this one, so I guess it's anybody's guess at this point. It is also worth noting uh, that as far as McCormick Place goes and the perimeter that we've become aware of this week, the United States Secret Service is expected to release its official plan for that perimeter and other security measures around the city sometime next week, perhaps late in the week. It is worth noting, too, they just want to make the public aware of changes that they're making around the city, not revealing any minute security details that could jeopardize any situation, but they want to let people know what the changes are going to be in case there might be any inconveniences they need to prepare for. Back to you. All right, Julie Andrew, thank you. We're going to keep